Welcome back, everyone. Johnny Keck over at AMP Futures. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, so we're going to take you through another function within multicharts.net, AMP exclusive platform free of charge. Uh, we're going to show you the order and position tracker window, which is uh, definitely highly recommended in terms of using it within your workspace. Uh, it's going to be vital for you to, to use this particular function to have an understanding of what's going on in the account in terms of account balance, seeing your working orders, accumulate profit and loss, open profit and loss, open positions, logs if there's any issues on the platform. So it's really going to be um, an important function within the platform, and we're going to show you exactly how to pull up an order and position tracker window. We're going to go through each one of the tabs within the function itself to explain the, the, the functionality of what that specific tab will represent. So let's, uh, let's show you real quick what the order and position tracker window looks like. It's this window right here. Let me just minimize the dome for a second and blow this up. And you're going to see this uh, populate onto the screen. So this is what it looks like. Now let me show you real quick where to go to pull up an order and position tracker window. So if you don't already have one open, you want to go to File. You want to go to New. And then you're going to see the option Order and Position Tracker Window. So you can see the little dollar sign icon there. So when you, when you click on that, and there's no limitation. You can open up multiple, multiple order and position tracker windows if you wish. And I do apologize again. My computer's running a little slow, but that's in the process of pulling up the second order and position tracker window. And there it is. All right. So well, since I already have one open, I'm just going to go ahead and close this this additional one that we just opened. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up the existing one and just resize it just a bit. I won't make it full screen, but I'll, I will make it bigger so you can see what's going on. All right, so let's go over some of the tabs that we see here. The first important tab is the Accounts tab. So this is where I usually go right off the bat when I connect to the platform for the very first time. I always look on the Accounts tab just to see my account number and my balance. Now, right now I'm using a demo account, so you, I don't have an AMP account number. However, you would see right here where it shows the account column, you're going to see your AMP account number, and then to the right of it, you'll see your total cash balance. All right, so total cash balance is basically the balance that you started the day with. And then if you look to the right, equity. Equity is going to be, assuming you place trades in an intraday session, it's going to be your total cash balance plus or minus whatever you lost or made uh, within the intraday session in terms of trades. All right, so I haven't done any trades today. That's why the balance is exactly the same. And then you'll see here paper traders. So it will show you if you're connected to multiple accounts, then you'll see the multiple accounts listed. However, if you're connected to the paper trader broker profile, uh, you'll see paper trader SIM001. Uh, that right there is the demo account where you can toggle back and forth when you have a live account with AMP Futures. And then in a couple of videos uh, from this one, I'm going to actually show you how to connect that paper trader broker profile, which is pretty important. If you ever want to jump back on the saddle, you had a bad day's worth of trading, you want to practice some of your strategies, and you want to go back to the demo account, uh, that would be essential for you to connect to the paper trader broker profile so you can access the simulation account built locally within multicharts.net. All right, so then you have... The cash balance, you have the equity, you have open P&L. I'm not in a position at this moment. That's why it, show, it shows that zero value. But when you're in a position, it's going to accumulate the open profit and loss for how much you're making or losing in the trade that you're in. And then realize P&L is a cumulative P&L. So that's going to show your total profit and loss throughout the entire session. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. You can always rearrange and order, rearrange the columns if you just take your mouse cursor and left click, let's say, and realize P&L. I want to move it to the left. You see how it just, it just swaps the, uh, the positioning of the columns there? So it's very straightforward. Just going to left click, move over. So however you want to rearrange those columns, you can do so by left clicking in that column while holding down the left click. Just drag to the left or right and just drop that, lo that uh, column wherever location you want it to, to be displayed within the order and position tracker window. And of course, you can resize the columns. If you take your mouse cursor and just hover it over the, uh, the border boundary of the column itself, your cursor will turn into a double-sided arrow. So if I left click and drag it to the right, now I'm making that column wider. If I drag it to the left, that's going to make it thinner. So that's one way of doing it. And uh, just organize it accordingly. And that's the Accounts tab. So that's usually the first thing I do when I connect to the platform. Just so I understand that I am connected to my account successfully, you should see your live A&P account number, and you should see your balance. So that's the, best, that's the first thing that you want to check. The next thing is the Orders tab. So the Orders tab is going to be used for the purpose of viewing your, your working orders, your canceled orders, rejected orders. And you'll see a bunch of these sub-tabs within the Orders tab that you can see at the very top here. So I'll explain what some of these tabs mean. So for instance, if uh, I'm connected to multiple data providers, as I explained earlier, uh, AMP has the ability to offer you three different data feeds that work with multicharge.net, CQG, Rhythmic, and Trading Technologies. So if you're connected to, say, three different data feeds at the same time, 
then you will have the, the drop down will list all the three three different data feeds that you have access to and then what can happen is when you're placing trades on a specific data feed you can choose to allocate which orders you'd like this to be displayed specific to that data feed so if you have it set to all it's going to show the orders for all the data feeds if you select CQG specifically then it's only going to show the orders just for CQG so Typically, most of our customers are just using one data provider when they're using multi-charts. So normally, you're just going to see all in CQG or whichever data feed you're using. All right, so that's the profile tab. The account tab, however, this is uh, ideal if you have linked accounts. When I, say, when I say linked accounts, that means that you're trading multiple accounts, but you're only using one login to access multiple accounts. Uh, this is typical if a customer perhaps has an LLC account and maybe an individual account, and they don't want to log into each account uh, manually, the, basically switching out the credentials to access their LLC account or switching out the credentials to access their individual account. So what they'll request with AMP is to link their accounts so they can use one username and password to access multiple accounts. So if that's the case, you'll see then that drop-down menu there, the multiple accounts that are linked to the login that you're using. And that's the account tab. And then the source here, this is pretty much if you're using manual orders, which means you're just manually executing trades, or if you're using strategy orders. Strategy orders are usually in relation to if you're using any type of uh, ATM, or not ATM strategies, but uh, exit strategies or entry strategies. So you'll see that, uh, you know, if you have a bracket order, for example, that you implemented uh, on the platform, you can click on strategy orders if you only want to focus on seeing the order specific for entry or exit strategies. Otherwise, if you're just doing manual transactions, then you can just select manual orders, or if you want to see everything, just make sure you select all. And then on the instrument, if you trade a variety of different markets, you may just trade just the mini S&P, or you might trade other markets such as crude oil, ES, currencies, gold, metal, financial products, uh, whatever the case may be, then you can allocate and choose what, uh, what instruments you only want visible so you can kind of get a structured way of looking at those orders specific to that market. So if you have it on all, then it's going to show everything. If you have it set for just EPM16, then it's only going to show orders specific for the mini S&P. All right, so that's pretty straightforward as well. And then the state, this is pretty important. This makes it easier to see uh, what state orders, after the fact, let's say if you place an order and the order gets filled, and what happens is towards the end of the day, you want to go through your, your filled transactions. Just make sure that everything matches up with your calculations and making sure there's no stranded orders out there. So you want to go and just count up and tally up all the orders, and you're not really concerned about looking at canceled or rejected orders. You just want to look at filled orders. So then you would just allocate that dropdown on state to filled only, and then you would see only just fill transactions. All right, so that's, uh, by default, it's always going to be on all. So if you have a bunch of canceled orders, I mean, you might place 100 canceled orders throughout the day. So it's going to be tough for you to go through every single order and, and pinpoint the filled orders if you have that state set to all. So it might be best just changing that to filled so you're only focusing on just fill transactions, and then you can go and tally up your report. And if anything looks wrong, then you can just let us know and we can look into it. Other than that, um, this is pretty much straightforward. I mean, otherwise, you can go back in history and see transactions from a particular date in the past. Uh, for example, I know I did some trades on the 25th, I believe. So if I hit this drop down here from, and just change that to the date of 25th, now you can see all the trades that I've done. So that's the, you can see a bunch of trades that I did on the 25th, they're demo trades, but I can change the state. So if I go to filled only, so you can see now I only did two, tr two round turns that day, or better yet, one round turn. But if you notice, if I go to all, there's a bunch of information, and a lot of those orders are canceled out. So as you can see, it can get a little messy, especially if you're doing a lot of cancellations on the platform. Uh, it might be best to go to filled, and now you can see if you have an organized structure of just seeing filled orders only. So that calendar option, the from and to date, will give you the ability to go back in the past and specifically look at uh, certain dates if you want to see orders on those dates. So that's the orders tab. The open positions tab is self-explanatory. This is where you're going to see open positions. Let me go ahead and just place a quick order real quick. And uh, let me just minimize this for a second. I'm just going to hit buy market here. So we'll just go long. All right, so I'm just, I just went long. Let's blow up the order and position tracker window again. And now you can see the open positions is displayed in the open positions tab. Another thing I want to point out real quick, just take a step back, go back to the orders tab. Let's go back to today's date. Uh, there's the order that I just placed. But let me place a quick working order. So let's say I'm long from 2094. I'll do a quick sell stop at 2088 even. All right, so let's go back to the order and position tracker window. And you can see now if I just go to working or pending plus filled, or we can just do pending. All right, so now I have that sell order working. You can see that in the order, the orders tab. Another thing I want to point out real quick, um, I don't really re recommend it because you can modify orders directly off the chart or the dome, but if you want to, you can modify orders from here as well. So you have the option, if you take, if you left click on the order and then you right click with your mouse, 
then you can go ahead and just cancel the order. Uh, you can change the stop price. You can do it here. You can change the order quantity. So that's one way of modifying the orders from the order and position tracker window from the orders tab. Now going back to the open positions tab, now you can see that I currently bought one contract of the June mini S&P contract at 2094. That's my average price. And there's my open P&L that's starting to, uh, to kick in. So I'm losing $12.50 at this very moment. Uh, you can see the quantity shows one, and it shows my profile, and then that's my demo account number. Of course, it would show your account number if you're trading live. And then from here, you can right-click and you can flatten everything. So this, this allows you to close out the position from the open positions tab within the order and position tracker window itself, which I'll demonstrate. As you can see now, the position is closed. So of course, if you don't have any positions and you're flat, it will never show open positions under the open positions tab. It will only show positions. So maybe perhaps a rule of thumb you can do is before you log out of the platform, just take a look at the open positions tab. If you don't see anything there, then that means you don't have any open positions. But also when you log out of the platform, it will tell you if you have a position open or working orders, it will say you have an open position or working orders. Are you sure you want to exit the platform? So at least that way you have a double confirmation letting you know that, hey, there's something going on before you close out of the platform. And then you have the same concept. You can select the profile, the accounts, and then you can, you can allocate the different instruments. Um, I don't have the different options because I don't have open positions open at the moment. But once you have different markets and positions open, you'll have the, different, uh, you'll have the functions to select which markets based on the open positions that you have. And then strategy positions is morally and related to if you're running automated trading strategies. With multicharts.net, you have the capability of programming with C-sharp code or visualbasics.net. So if you're running any type of automation or perhaps you're using the pre-built signals that come included with multicharts.net, if you're executing on that aspect, the strategy positions will be displayed from the strategy positions tab. All right, so that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I won't use an example for now, but uh, that's pretty much if you're running any type of automated trading and any positions that you have will be listed in the strategy positions tab. And then positions history will just give you the ability to go back to look at certain positions that you took place that took place uh, beyond the date of today. So you can use the from and to calendar dates just like we did for the orders tab. So it's a similar concept. The only difference is you're not going to see working orders. You're just going to see specifically positions. So this will at least give you a breakdown of how to see you know, what, uh, what trades you executed on certain dates. It will give you a P&L breakdown trade by trade. Uh, I don't necessarily recommend the position's history to use as a performance summary or to look as a trade summary. You actually have the trade summary tab, which is right there, which we'll get to on the last uh, tab. Uh, but pretty much position history allows you to go back to a certain date and see positions uh, beyond today's date. All right, so just make sure you use the from and to date calendar and select the date that you want to see the position histories for, and it will populate that information. Now the logs tab is pretty important. Uh, logs tab, whenever I'm helping you know, a customer troubleshooting an issue, if I can't get the platform to connect for any reason, or if I'm, you know, a customer's placing a trade and they're asking me what's going on, I can't, uh, I can't submit this trade successfully, the logs tab is always going to be your go-to to have an understanding of what the issue is. So it's best to go to the logs tab. You can see that it gives you a log of everything that's going on from me connecting to the platform to me placing trades. So usually if you can't connect to your broker profile, uh, meaning you can't connect to the data feed for some reason, the logs tab will help you identify what the issue is. It'll either say invalid username or password. It might say unable to connect to remote server. So there might be a handful of different error messages, and that's going to help us understand what the problem is to help troubleshoot the problems to correct it. Uh, or if you get rejected for an order, for example, you're trading an expired contract that went off the board, it might say that uh, this contract is no longer an available contract. You can no longer trade it. So you might get some sort of, the, some sort of error message that's going to help you identify uh, what is going on. So the logs tab is very helpful. Highly recommend using it if there's something going on in the platform and you're not sure what it is. And then the alerts tab, that's going to be if you set any type of audio alerts or indicator alerts, just alerts in general, they're going to be displayed in the alerts tab. It'll just basically give you a recap on a time a timestamp of when that alert fired off. It will tell you uh, what instrument. It'll give you a message of what type of alert it is. And then of course you can go back and see previous history alerts by using that from and to calendar date as well. So it's the same, very similar concept to all the additional tabs. Uh, you're just going to basically use those drop-downs there to allocate and uh, show what type of display you want on that specific tab. And then last but not least, the Trade Summaries tab is a, a very nice way to go in there and organize and see a performance summary of what you've been doing for you know so-and-so amount of days. You can go back. Uh, you can use the one thing that, that a little is confusing sometimes with the Trade Summary in the Order and Position Tracker window is if you have 
used a demo account before in the past, you have a lot of different demos, it will show you all the previous connections that you've connected with in multi-charts, and sometimes you have to go there and check the appropriate connection in order for you to generate the proper report. Uh, so sometimes that could be a little uh, confusing, but otherwise, for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. You just got to make sure you select the proper account, and then once you do that, once you identify that, then you can go ahead and set percentages uh, in terms of your initial capital, your risk-free, and just hit that generate button, and it will generate a report. Uh, to be honest with you, I prefer the performance summary, which uh, I can show you real quick. If I go to, so I just placed a trade just now. I did just one round turn for today. So what I can do is on the chart, if I right click on the chart, if I go to format instrument, and just set my data range just for today's date, and it's going to be a quick demonstration. I know it's a little off topic, but I just want to show you something real quick. And now if I click on the chart here, I can look at trading performance report. And uh, we'll actually have a different video for this, but this is what I prefer when looking at uh, strategy performance summary. This is similar to if you're familiar with TradeStation software. This is what ideally what a programmer uses when they're looking at backtesting an algorithm. Uh, this is where they're going to go to see a lot more information than that trade summary that I just showed you. So trade summary is more of just a uh, above the surface, a very vague uh, type of way of looking at uh, performance within the platform. But if you look at the, the trading performance report within multi-charts, which is what you see at this, on the screen at this very moment, this is going to be a more detailed summary because you can look at everything, you know, from equity curve charts uh, to trade analysis, list of trades, total trades. You can see periodical analysis, which focuses on duration of how long you were in the trade, so things like that. And uh, that's not information that you're going to be able to access within the order and position tracker window. So this is going to be a more detailed way of looking at performance summary. And we'll cover and knock that down in a different video. But for now, uh, that usually is my preference in, sure, in terms of using a performance summary report. But otherwise, if you just want something very simple, then just you feel free to use a trade summary from the order and position tracker window. And then other than that, uh, that is a, prick, uh, a short video of the order and position tracker function. Definitely highly recommend using it. And uh, otherwise, thank you for your time. We'll see you in the next video.